All these pretty tools. And people that are new to this always want to know the same thing. What are the tools I need? And I'm gonna show you that today. Let me start out saying that most of these tools will be less expensive if you'll buy them in a set. And you don't have to stay with one brand because no one brand makes the best tool for every application. Our first set of tools is a set of screwdrivers. Starting from the right of the screwdrivers, we have a 5 16 flat, a number three Phillips, a quarter inch flat, a number two Phillips, a 3 16 flat, and number one Phillips, we have a short number two Phillips screwdriver and a short quarter inch flat screwdriver. And then we have an eighth inch flat and a zero Phillips driver. On the far right of this set, we also have an offset screwdriver that has a Phillips tip and a flat tip on it and a magnetizer demagnetizer. You'll notice that all of these screwdrivers have a black iron oxide tip. It helps it with magnetism. It also looks sharp. But one important thing about screwdrivers that you really need to pay attention to is the type of grip. You really need to put the screwdriver in your hand to feel whether it fits your hand well or not. Next, we have a drill bit set. This is a titanium coated drill bit set. High speed steel drill bit set is fine. The different types of coating and different types of drill bits allow it to drill more holes or in harder metals. This set is sized from a half inch all the way down to 1 16th of an inch. It also has 3 8 inch shanks on the larger drill bits to fit a 3 8 inch drill motor. And the whole set comes in a nice carrying case so you can keep track of whether your drill bits are missing or not. In addition to that drill bit set and for your drill motor, is a quarter inch magnetized nut driver and a 5 16 inch magnetized nut driver. These drivers are really useful for driving in hex head self-tapping screws into metal. You also need a number two Phillips screwdriver for your drill motor as well. I usually place those drivers inside the drill bit case so that I know where they are when I need them. Next up is a tape measure. I usually buy 25 foot tape measures for my shop and I always buy them in yellow or green or orange, some sort of bright color, but I always lay them down and I cannot find them. I like the type of tape measures where you pull them out and it's already locked and you have to push a button to release. On this particular type of tape measure, it also has some conversion tables on the back, such as decimal to fraction. And I'd like this tape measure because it has two hooks on the end instead of one hook. You need a simple retractable blade razor knife. I usually buy them in green or yellow for visibility, but this one is gray and it will work fine. You'll have to remove the side screw in order to change the blade. And usually the handle is hollowed out and stores several blades in it as well. And next you need a good 12 inch aluminum framed hacksaw. You need to buy one that's got a really strong frame so that the blades won't flex when you use them. Next up, you need a fractional SAE socket set. These are shallow 12 point sockets. These are American fractions and they have red lines around the sockets to identify them as American fractions. In this view, I'm showing you a comparison between a 12 point socket and a six point socket. You can see that a 12 point socket literally has 12 points inside the socket. A six point socket and a 12 point socket will do the same job but a six point socket will usually not round off a fastener where a 12 point socket may round off a fastener. Most socket sets will come with a 5 8 and a 13 16 spark plug sockets. You also need to get a swivel. Now this socket set is a 3 8 inch drive. That means the box in the end of the socket is 3 8 by 3 8. And the Parts that plug into it also are 3 8 by 3 8. You also need a set of metric sockets. This is a shallow 12 point 3 8 inch drive set of metric sockets. Their sizes are from 22 millimeters all the way down to 10 millimeters. So you need a 3 8 inch ratchet and 3 8 inch extensions. Now I'm showing you how they all fit together. The ratchet fits into the extension. The extension fits into the swivel socket and the swivel socket plugs into the regular socket. The ratchet can be adjusted where it loosens a fastener or tightens a fastener with ratcheting motion. 
If your budget allows, you may also want some 3 8 inch drive deep well sockets. On this tree, you can see that I've got the SAE American fractional sizes, and I have the metric sizes on the other side. On this tree, you can identify the SAE sockets from the metric sockets because they're different brands. You can see here that I've got all of the sockets organized on socket organization trees. This helps keep track of which sockets I'm using and which sockets I'm missing. It also has room for expansion for special sockets in the future. You'll absolutely need a set of wrenches. This is an SAE medium length combination wrench set. This goes from one and an eighth inch all the way down to five sixteenths of an inch. These wrenches are called combination because there's two different types of ends on them. The round end is called a box end and the open end is called an open end. So these are combination open end box end wrenches. And you need a combination set of metric wrenches as well. This metric set goes from 22 millimeters all the way down to nine millimeters. Next up are slip joint pliers. These pliers have a padded handle. They have serrated teeth for biting and gripping into things that you grab, and they slip joint into two different positions. Next up, you need what's called needle nose pliers. These needle nose pliers have a sharp tip for reaching into small spaces. They also have a part here for cutting wire, and that wire cutting part has a little bit of serrations for grabbing hold of a nut to twist it. Behind the wire cutter, inside of the grip, it has serrations also for grabbing something and turning it. You will use needle nose pliers quite a bit. These needle nose pliers are about eight inches long. Next up, we have tongue and groove pliers. A lot of the fix-it people will call these channel locks. They're both correct, but channel locks is a brand of tongue and groove pliers. These are not channel locks, but you will still hear people call them channel locks. Tongue and groove pliers have multiple positions and can turn a very, very large fastener. They have serrated teeth to bite into what you grab. And this pair of pliers has a padded handle for extra grip. The next tool you'll need is an adjustable wrench. Again, a lot of people call this a crescent wrench. And they're correct, but a crescent wrench is a brand of wrench. There are a lot of these that are adjustable wrenches that are not crescent wrenches. So you'll still hear people call them crescent wrenches, and that's fine, but they are adjustable wrenches. This particular adjustable wrench is 10 inches. It can turn a large fastener or a small fastener as well. It has a hole in the end for hanging, or sometimes they will have a hex in there to grab a hold of a nut or a bolt. This adjustable wrench also has a padded handle for extra grip. You will also need some what's called vice grips or locking pliers. Locking pliers are kind of like a last resort tool. It's a bad day when you have to put vice grips onto a nut or a bolt. That usually means it's stripped and you have no other way of getting that nut or bolt loose. These are eight inch locking pliers and they are vice grip brand. You'll need Allen wrenches in both SAE and metric sizes. Allen wrenches are sticks that stick out and they're hex shaped and they fit inside of a fastener to get the fastener tightened or loosened. You will also need a claw hammer. This is a 20 ounce fiberglass handled claw hammer. It has a padded rubber grip and a fiberglass handle so that it absorbs shock. It has a 20 ounce head on it. I hope you got your Christmas list ready to give your relatives and your friends so that you get the tools that you want. In our next video, we'll talk about tool storage. Thanks for watching. I've got more to come.